Welcome back to the News at 10. Once again, the Reuters News Agency is today reporting a senior military official as saying that the flashpoint town of Bama in northeast Bono State has been recaptured from Boko Haram. The Nigerian military is also reported to have blocked the Islamist militants' advance towards the state capital, Maiduguri. Government forces are also reported to be repelling an advance into neighboring Adamawa State by the militants' group which has recently departed from its usual hit-and-run tactics and started to seize towns and territory. According to Reuters, the government source, who asked not to be named, says Boko Haram fighters had been driven from Bama, 70 kilometers southeast of Meiduguri. A source also said the government's warplanes have bombed and strafed the militants after they stormed Bama last week. Bama has been recaptured by the soldiers, and I can confirm to you Meduguri is safe, the official is quoted to have told Reuters. Nigeria's military had deployed reinforcements to Adamawa State to confront this threat and was setting up roadblocks and positions around Mubi to prevent the militants from advancing further south, so says the government official. Welcome to Sports News. We'll begin with tennis where Japan's Nishikori and 10th seed Marin Cilic are currently battling it out in the U.S. Uh, Open men's final. Well, Cilic seems to have the upper hand after he won the first set. The second set is underway with Nishikori taking the first game. With close to 50 minutes played in the first set, both players seem to determined to fight for every point. Whatever the outcome of the match, one thing is sure, a new name will be added to the list of Grand Slam winners. Meanwhile, the Super Eagles of Nigeria have arrived in South Africa for the 2015 Cup of Nations qualifier against South Africa. The team led by uh, coach Stephen Keshi will have a training session or did have a training session earlier today and will be having another one tomorrow ahead of the clash with Bafana Bafana on Wednesday in Cape Town. The game in South Africa may bring relief to football fans in Nigeria after the country avoided a suspension from FIFA. FIFA had given the NFF a deadline of September the 8th for Chris Giwa to vacate office or face a ban from all football activities. And at the international scene, Sepp Blatter has confirmed that he will run for a fifth term as FIFA president in next year's elections. The 78-year-old Swiss previously insisted that the term from 2011 to 2015 would be his last, but he has now changed his mind. Blatter has been head of FIFA since 1998 and is expected to be re-elected following Michel Platini's decision not to stand. You see, um, the... Uh uh, a mission is never never finished and my mission is not finished and that's i have told them uh, to the uh, to the fifa congress i have told to the congresses of uh, uh, the uh, confederations and then uh, i got the, through through the last work, um, uh, the congress in uh, san uh, paul in, in sao paulo uh, not only the impression but the support the support of the majority, the huge majority of national associations asking, uh, please uh, go on, uh, be our uh, president also in the future. And uh, now in, uh, I would uh, make an official declaration definitely uh, in uh, September now when we have the executive committee, I will inform the executive committee, it's a question of respect also, uh, to say then to the football family, yes, uh, I will be ready, I will be, uh, I will be a candidate. Who can dare the might of Blatter? But that's it on Sports News. It's back to Amara with the rest of the news at 10. On the foreign scene, 12 people have been killed in an attack seen as retaliation for the killing of Al-Shabaab leader Ahmed Ghodani. A car laden with explosives was said to have rammed into an AU convoy traveling southwest of the capital, Mogadishu. Following confirmation of Ghodani's death last week, Al-Shabaab named the new leader, Ahmed Umar, also known as Abu Ubaid. Uh, the group has promised revenge Ghodani's death, a move that concerns analysts here in Africa. 
Meanwhile, the, uh, just three days after the United States did confirm the death of uh, Al-Shabaab leader Ahmed Ghadani, the group retaliated, like it said, uh, with a suicide car bomber killing 12 people in Mogadishu. Uh, Cynthia Ara has more on this as well as other stories on the foreign scene. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, that was indeed the case. The local governor confirmed that a car laden with explosives was rammed into an AU convoy traveling southwest of the capital, Mogadishu. This attack is in line with what international experts predicted when they said Godani's death would provide even more problems for the West. Then following the ceasefire deal, which was signed between the Ukraine government and the pro-Russian rebels, the Ukrainian president, Petro Poroshenko, has announced the release of 1,200 prisoners. The releases were part of the deal, which included an exchange of prisoners. Also today, according to Iraqi government forces, they've succeeded in clearing the militants from a wide area around the strategic Haditha Dam, helped by U.S. airstrikes. The jihadists have repeatedly tried to capture the dam on the river Euphrates in the western province of Anbar. Finally, six months since the Malaysia flight MH370 went missing, there's still no word on where it might be or if there were any survivors. There have been emotional scenes at a temple in Beijing where relatives of passengers on board the Malaysia flight gathered to mark the anniversary since the plane disappeared. About 30 relatives listened to a man read a poem, and some cried while others sat on the floor. And those are the top stories on the foreign scene. Thanks a lot, Cynthia. Nigerian hip-hop superstar Don Jazzy is not dead, as widely spread over social media. Find out details on this and more on Entertainment News with Mayowa Ogundele. Well, on Entertainment News tonight, multiple award-winning music producer and record label executive Don Jazzy has put paid to a death rumor that dominated social media over the weekend. He was a victim of a death hoax which reported that Dorobuchi singer and producer was involved in a fatal car crash. But the former Mohit's boss has shut down the rumor which was causing a frenzy over social media. <laughs> Hip Hop World Award winning rapper Ferry the Rapman has revealed that he is going to make a crossover into the movie making arm of entertainment. The rapper, who had not been able to achieve commercial success with his rap career, revealed he's already working on some scripts and has been under the tutelage of movie producer Charles Novia. It will be recalled that the Boys Are Not Smiling rapper made a cameo appearance in Novia's Alan Posa. It appears Nollywood actor and director Desmond Elliott will be off the Nollywood radar for a while as he kicks off the shooting of a 300-episode TV series in Nairobi, Kenya. The Nollywood hunk is reportedly taking up an acting come directorial role in a romantic thriller in the East African country. Finally, it seems the wait for the sophomore album of Nigerian music superstar Wizkid is about to end. The BET award-winning singer is set to release a self-titled 18-tracker album which features music heavyweights including Femi Kuti, Fino, Shei Shei, Banky W and American stars Wale, Akon and Tiger. And in Hollywood, Guardians of the Galaxy continued its improbable assault on the box office collecting slightly over $10 million to lead all films after a month in theaters. Featuring a cast of misfit superheroes that includes a machine gun carrying raccoon, Guardians leapt from the pages of Marvel Comics to a total of $295 million in ticket sales in U.S. and Canadian theaters, shooting past Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which earned $6.5 million in ticket sales for three days over the weekend, and if I stay, hitting close to $6 million. The you you are now is the same you I was in love with yesterday, the same you I'll be in love with tomorrow. Well, that's it on Entertainment News. Let's get back to the main news. Thanks a lot, Maya. And the main news again. The Health Minister, Professor Nyobuchi Chukwu, has provided assurances that Nigeria is making good progress with containing the Ebola virus disease. The minister confirmed the 19th case in the country, but added that the victim has recovered. 
Also, the Reuters news agency has today reported a senior military official as saying that the flashpoint town of Bama in northeast Borno state has been recaptured from Boko Haram. The Nigerian military has also been reported to block the Islamist militants advance towards the state capital in Meduguri. And Japan's K Nishikori and 10th seed Marin Cilic are currently battling it out in the U.S. Open's men's final. Cilic does seem to have the upper hand. He won the first set 6-3. The second set has just started and Cilic is leading 2-1. Expecting a winner later tonight. Well, that's it on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ovani. Focus in Africa is up next.